although it's older here. And uh, recently I wrote an article basically revolving around accessing crucial information when the grid goes down. Now this all came about because I do spend a lot of time in the field doing what I do and I became accustomed to having a tablet with me because when I'm out there in the field most of the time I don't have internet access and a lot of times I'm lucky to even have access to power and most of the time that's by choice. But the other thing, or the other flip side of the coin, is that I'm limited on accessing a lot of the information that I needed to access. So now being able to have this tablet that had various SD cards, that now I can go ahead and put all sorts of different subject matter on these individual cards, take it out in the field with me, and I kind of have my own little built-in Google to access certain subject matter that I needed to for whatever my mission was at the time. As I progressed with this and saw this as maybe a viable uh, solution for an emergency, if the grid goes down and being able to have access to this tablet, have access to all sorts of information and a lot of the skills that I'm lagging in in an emergency, where am I going to get that information, right? We're not going to have Google and we might not even have power. So the tablet was a very good solution for me for a while. But then I began to think, I'm like, you know what, I'm depending on one piece of technology, and we all know how that goes, right? Technology a lot of times goes out of whack, whether it's viruses, whether it's components inside, uh, you know, going, uh, going awry, so to speak, and uh, there goes our tablet in an emergency situation, there goes my information source. So I started thinking, I'm like, everybody in my group and every member, let's say, of my tribe, everybody has a smartphone these days. So if I was able to, let's say, depend on a smartphone, that I'd have access to various, various uh, smartphones just in my group, uh, I'd probably vote a lot better in an emergency situation, not having to just depend on one device. So I started researching and came across just uh, various devices that are inexpensive, super lightweight, which is important, of course, when we're thinking about adding something to our go bag, that I can pretty much depend on, be able to read my whole library of uh, SD cards with, once again, all sorts of subject matter and that I can also continually add. All I have to do is get these little mini SD cards, keep putting the subject matter that I need on there, and in an emergency situ situation, I basically have my own little built-in Google or my built-in library. So what I wanna do now is basically share uh, some of those extra devices that I utilize to be able to facilitate this task so that uh, you may be able to access your crucial information when the grid goes down. So let's get started. So the first thing I wanted to bring up is a phone. Now, this is a relatively old phone. Uh, it was uh, from a couple uh, upgrades ago, uh, so to speak. And normally I do trade in my phone or donate it. But in this case, I decided to hold on to it just because I wanted a backup phone just in case. And it actually has served me well because when I ended up switching from the tablet to uh, carrying a phone with me for information purposes, it was great to have this backup phone. I mean, if you think about it in an emergency situation, the, uh, you might be in an emergency, but the grid still might not be down. So I might be needing to use my primary phone for communication, and I can use the backup phone to access my SD cards and get the information that I need uh, at the same time. The card reader. So this one is actually a card reader for a um, Android device, and also connects to anything that accepts a standard USB input. So this one, like I stated, is catered to Android. Uh, there's other ones that are catered to iPhones, and there's other ones that are still for catered to both of them. So once again, depending on your budget and your needs, there is something out there available for you. So basically, we would go ahead, take the SD card, connect it in there. Uh, from here, I can go ahead to the uh, micro USB on the actual phone, on the Android phone, and connect that in, and that'll be able to pull up the information uh, usually on Android, I go to My Files. In My Files, it'll find the card reader or the SD card, and I can go ahead and access whatever information I need to access. Next up, we have the micro SD cards themselves. This one is actually in the adapter, as I stated earlier. So that's actually the SD card. And they come in all different sizes, from 4 gigs all the way up to 128, maybe even higher. But for the purposes of this, as far as the car re card readers, uh, this one and a lot of the other ones that I've researched, they basically max out at 64 gigabytes, which is still a ton of information for a little card like this that you're storing. So uh, just another reason why I like this type of setup. 
uh, you know, think about how many books you'd have to be able to carry. I think this one's maybe eight gigabytes or how many texts or how many field manuals you'd actually have to stuff into your go bag and adding that extra weight uh, to be able to bring the same amount of information that you bring into something this size. So uh, SD cards, once again, relatively standard, uh, depend, uh, regardless of the operating system. So uh, make sure you get yourself a few of these. Now, USB cables. Uh, you want to find something that has a good transfer rate, something that gives you flexibilities. Uh, these particular ones that I have here, uh, in addition to other standard uh, micro USB cables that I have that work with my Android and as well as other devices. And another reason why I do like the, uh, the Android uh, operating system. I know there's always a battle between that and Apple. I really don't care about that. I just kind of care about the flexibility and the fact that the micro uh, USB cables work on a plethora of devices that I have, not just my phone. So it's nice and convenient because if I misplace one, you know, I still have it from the other device that can be utilized for my phone and vice versa. But what I want you to keep in mind is also durability. Uh, some of these other ones that we find out there because they are a dime a dozen because they do come with so many devices, but they're super fragile. Now, you put them in your bag incorrectly, or they're not protected, or you end up bending them just a little bit more. Now, think about it, in an emergency situation, uh, you're not exactly going to be calm. So you're not going to be very gentle on your electronics. So these cables that are finicky, the more finicky they are, the less they're going to be able to perform for you. So find something with a good transfer rate, and uh, also that's relatively durable. As I'm sure you're aware of, these little components, electronic components, are very finicky. Uh, they're made of very lightweight plastic you know, they're not really designed for the outdoor use in mind. But what I like is uh, this product by Theorem called the Cell Vault. And it's watertight, basically waterproof with this O-ring here. And it's also crush proof with this made out of this strong uh, polymer. And knowing that I can keep my SD cards in there, keep my reader in there, basically gives me peace of mind that I don't have to worry about, you know, are they okay? Are they going to be safe in there? Did they get wet? Did they get crushed when I leaned up against a tree? You know, kind of takes all that extra stress out of the equation. It also stages on the outside, attaches to my webbing on the outside of the pack. So not only making it easy, easy to access, but also I don't have to take up any space inside my pack or fumble around with it during an emergency or in the dark to gain access uh, to my components. Now, in an emergency or in a crisis, our phones aren't going to last too long, and we might not be able to have any power or access to power. So what I have here are these uh, battery banks, or power banks, that I can go ahead and hook up to my phone and be able to charge them up. So this one here is about 8,000 milliamps, so I can get two to three charges, full charges for my phone. And this one is 22,000 milliamp, which allows me to probably charge my phone close to nine to ten times. So uh, in a pinch, these are ideal. They're not lightweight, but the fact that they're going to provide juice for a long time and uh, keep my comms as well as my access to information going, uh, they're well worth the extra weight. So I discussed the actual battery power banks, but what happens when they go down? Especially in an emergency, it might last two or three weeks that you need to ride it out. And uh, you might be charging your phones as well as other people's phones, so you're going to drain those power battery banks fast. So what I have here, and I always include, is a good quality portable solar charger. So once again, I can utilize this to actually charge my phone or phones directly, or I can go ahead and hook up my power banks and get them charged up. So to me, this is definitely a piece of crucial item, uh, or a piece of crucial gear for uh, emergency preparedness. Because uh, without power, uh, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about right now is basically useless. All right, we all know that electronics and water do not mix. So what I have here is a small dry bag that I keep uh, these components that I've been showing you uh, in. Whether it's my phone, whether it's the uh, power banks, I keep everything in here to uh, make sure that it's dry. Not only do I have to worry about the rain, but you know, sometimes you'll end up in a puddle, especially in uh, dark situations and you're taking a break or whatever, you sit up against something and your pack ends up in a puddle of water. Uh, also, you might have to wade through a small body of water to get to where you're going. And uh, knowing that my electrical components are dry and safe inside of this bag uh, gives me peace of mind and allows me to focus on what I need to focus on rather than uh, taking extra care and keeping my electronics dry. Now, there's always a lot of talk out there about EMPs, electromagnetic pulse uh, attacks that uh, we might experience in the future. And being able to have a little Faraday bag that could protect against that, as far as what the manufacturer states, I can go ahead, keep my cell phone in here, and uh, put this 
inside of my dry bag uh, along with the other components and know that my phone at least my phone is good to go i also keep it off because uh, supposedly that also helps but we really don't know because we're not really sure what kind of pulse we would get when we do get attacked uh, whether it's a nuclear pulse whether it's something else that's uh latest technology so i'm not sure if this will fare too well but you know what it's extremely lightweight relatively inexpensive it's worth the extra measure at least in my book so bottom line i realized that it could be a lot of work to take information and transfer it and even convert it i convert video tutorials uh all sorts of stuff even some uh, some of my micro sd cards are filled with movies for entertainment because you never know what you're going to face you need to keep morale up so I understand that it's a relatively uh, time-consuming task, but uh, what's the other alternative? To get caught in an emergency situation and not have access to crucial information that you might need to uh, survive for both you and your family? Uh, I practice a lot of skills. I take a lot of time seeking knowledge, but uh, the more that I learn, the more that I realize that I need to learn a lot more. So knowing that I could put a lot of this crucial information that I'm not well versed in on these SD cards, have access to them in an emergency to try and fare better and uh, get through this crisis uh, the best way possible, then uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue devoting the extra time. And hopefully it was something that I brought to your attention that uh, made you think about it a little bit, and it might be something that you want to add to your preparedness gear. Once again, this is Helder. I hope that you found this video useful.